Hello everybody, we're back and talking about UK Games Expo again. I'm joined by Richard and Tony. Thank you for joining us, guys. Oh, welcome. Justin, of course, with us as well. Hello. And we're going to chat a little bit about some of the seminars and some of the more intimate and more businessy related uh, things that go on at the event as well. So one of the things I wanted to delve into was the kind of fun, energetic seminars you guys have going on. So the things that people who used to listen to podcasts, maybe watching people on YouTube, the likes of No Pun Intended, the likes of The Dice Tower, you're bringing them all to the show live. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes. So we've got uh, um, two very popular shows that mm -hmm. we've, we've had the last couple of years, so Shut Up and Sit Down, yeah. of course, and also the Dice Tower. Um, Dice Tower sort of top 10, I think, is one of the more, most popular events that... It, people love a year. top 10. Yeah. And they, yeah. they generally, you put four people on a panel at the front of an audience and they go through the top 10 anything and people just eat it up. Yeah. Well, yeah I, I, so, I don't know. I don't get well, it I myself. <laughs> I don't get it. You do, yeah. really, do you? You, you, you? You've got a top 10 somewhere. Oh, I do. Of games? What are your top 10 top 10s? Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's meta, Tony. That's way beyond my brain capacity right now. <laughs> and it's been the, the previous shows have been a success that you're yes. doing a similar thing again? Yep, yeah, so, so they're back again because they're always very popular. I mean, the different sort of styles and the shut up and sit down is very sort of light hearted, mm -hmm. slightly irreverent look at, at yeah. gaming. Um, uh, Dice Towers, um, more sort of a more focused, sort of obviously look at their what they like in, mm -hmm. like in games. Um, and, and, and we've got some other other events. I think now we've probably intended to do some musical games quiz show mm -hmm. or something uh, like that. And uh, Paul, Paul Grogan's um, Gaming, Gaming Rules, Rules yeah. um, he's, he's going to be doing a live recording of his podcast uh, at the show. And there's a couple of other um, podcasts and things which are doing similar similar mm -hmm. things across the weekend. Yeah. So there's an opportunity to be in the audience at mm -hmm. one of these you know, live live events. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, good. we'll be publishing that yeah. schedule on the website pretty soon, uh, yes, fairly yes, soon. Pretty so soon, so yeah. we just... Yeah. In fact, I think uh, you're waiting for me to do a little bit of code, aren't you? Yeah. Just to, so, yeah. so it will show. So. <laughs> okay, it's it's entirely code. my fault. Yeah. Be careful of that code. Just gives one one tiny little thing. Good tumble. Oh yes, yes, it all comes flying apart. It's yes, it's this, a this delicate is why I don't balance. Of, in I, I get daily emails at the moment about when is your seminar schedule going to be published? I said. Soon, yeah, <laughs> but, but it's good. These yeah. these people have big followings. Yes. And, you know, they, they're talking about potentially hundreds of thousands or millions of, of, of subscribers and things of YouTube. Well, it's also because know... there are quite a few people who like to book their weekend a little bit around one or two of these events. Yeah. Mm. So once they know when mm -hmm. these things are on, then they can work out whether they can play in that yeah. tournament. Yeah, so public apology game. for me. The reason Richard yeah. hasn't published the <laughs> seminar schedule is because I haven't let it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point we'll you guys are seeing is it might already be sold out so just make sure you're regularly checking the UK Games Expo yeah, website all, all of the seminars are free to entry oh, yeah. fantastic. so they're part of the if you've got a day ticket for that day they're free to entry yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't ticket them because they're free to entry mm -hmm. um, so what will happen is really first time first serve yeah. so if, if you want one of these popular ones get there early yeah and um, you know they they know how many people fit, so they mm -hmm. they, get, get they won't leave you queuing when there's no room inside. Yeah. They'll come and tell you where the cutoff is, but get there early for those sorts mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, I think yes. it's it's really the the best and only way to do it when it comes to these kind of things. That there's so many people that'll be interested in it. Yeah, I mean, we we don't want to charge you know to yeah. be perfectly money for them because mm -hmm. uh, you know that's been included in the price since yeah. we've started. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just not part of what we do. But yeah. if you can't do that, limit it by that mm -hmm. ticket. Then the only way is first come first serve. Yeah. yeah. So apart um, from the, cool. those sort of events, we've also got um, there'll, be, there'll be one with uh, Ian Livingston. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, to be decided the exact topic yet, but uh, always a very popular event. Absolutely. And, you know, um, talking about whatever he wants to talk about, really. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, we did it one the very was that the second or third year of the expo, didn't he, on the history of fighting fantasy and. He stuff, did yeah. indeed. I remember it yeah. well because I introduced it because yeah. I am a Ian Livingston fanboy, obviously, yeah. having got into the the hobby through mm -hmm. fighting fantasy. Yeah. I did get the opportunity then, having uh, done fighting fantasy, got into Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. failed my A levels because I was <laughs> building worlds. Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, oh. I had to resit them all in six months the, the, the year after. So it owes you one. So, it does. so I do remember introducing mm -hmm. the fighting fan saying, This is Ian Livingston, he's great. And uh, just got a message for you here. My mum says, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you don't half stress their head out over that? <laughs> so, uh, so yes. I mean, uh, whatever. I mean, Ian's. Uh, you know, it was a wonderful 
talking over on the on the history of games workshop yeah, and whatever he does it's always good, mm-hmm. good, good great and interesting yeah, he's a great public speaker isn't he yeah. just so knowledgeable yeah. about the whole games mm. and then outside of the more kind of, kind of light-hearted community driven and kind of guest stars you've also got seminars and kind of workshops and panels and the like of more serious topics so for people that are going to, to learn something yeah yes yeah so i mean uh, the, we, there is the well, there's we had a, did a kickstarter event last uh, last year mm-hmm. which was very popular, just basically filled the room and had people sticking their head in from the <laughs> corridor outside. Uh, so that'll be back on Saturday evening, but in more space. Mm-hmm. So if you want to find out about anything to do with Kickstarter, uh, you know, how to get, how to do a Kickstarter, how to promote it, how to market it, the whole thing, yep. and, and how to fulfill the orders, mm-hmm. uh, all aspects of it are going to be explored on that. Yeah, if you're doing Kickstarter, session. don't yeah. stick your head in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other such events, so there'll be, there'll be, we're still working on the exact makeup of all these mm-hmm. workshops and panels. And a mixture of things. So there are there'll be you know, talks and, and things on prototyping and mar- marketing and design and uh, writing rules and also workshops. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, we've had one with artists and things showing you how to do artwork for games and uh, how to do scenario writing for role playing games. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them are, are, are individual, but relatively yeah. niche areas. Uh, but a dozen or fifteen or twenty or thirty people that are going to go to that mm-hmm. will it'll be a great uh, huge hour benefit, to a time. Yeah. You know. Uh, some of the per, you know personal time with a, mm-hmm. with a, with a and that's with what a, I was thinking because the, the smaller yeah. events are great because you get a bit of Q and A time or a bit of personal time. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worse than watching a YouTube video and coming away from it going, oh, I really didn't get that couple of things and scrolling through the comments looking for a bit of insight. And you just can't find it. Whereas if you're there with the person, that's the question. you can yeah. yes, rest it into your head. Um, because I must admit, since I've joined Beast of War, when we were in Beast of War, you know, for about three quarters of a year now. I've had a couple of events that I've been at, both at Essen and at SteamCon as well. I've had people come up to me and just say, can I get your advice on what I should do with my game? Do you have any contacts? Do you have any next steps for me, what I could do? And you do your best to kind of put them on. But yeah. the people who are going to be running these kind of workshops are people who have decades of experience in the yeah. industry or loads of experience yeah. in their chosen field. I mean, part of these events at Expo started because we encountered the same thing. Yeah. So we would regularly get emails saying, yes. how do I get this mm-hmm. and how do I get that? And you you wrote a sort of couple of pages from your Medusa head and yeah. and from what we knew from Expo, mm-hmm. and we realised that having done some of this as well, we realised conventions actually a really tough place to 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 get people's attention because yeah. the people you need to talk to are busy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and often the people you really need to talk to aren't on the stand at all. Yeah, they're over uh, um, in in the lounge having coffee in a meeting mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. So we thought what we need to do is, is get access to that. Yeah, in other words. So that rather than um, somebody hearing 12 half-baked design ideas mm-hmm. on a stand, yeah. you start to get to say to people, look, if you want to put a design forward, this is how you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jibber-jabbering about your favourite game that you've been thinking about for four years mm-hmm. in which you've stuck a couple of bits of cardboard together for isn't, isn't how it works. No. But even things like this year, we've very much had a, a much clearer spec document mm-hmm. say yes. if you're going to submit say to the wyvern's lair mm-hmm. which is one of our routes through yep. or the speed, speed dating, dating event yep. this is how you write a specification mm-hmm. document so that the publisher mm-hmm. knows what he's getting yep. Yep. in other words knows what you're trying to sell mm-hmm. him and what your idea and design is because yep. i mean one of the things i learned i didn't know we spoke to alex jaeger didn't we uh, yep. uh, uh formerly of mayfair <laughs> games he mm-hmm. said very often the theme is what the designers enthused about mm-hmm. and it's the last thing they're enthused about <laughs> they're interested in the des- in in the mechanic yeah because yes. they say we can swap the design out well, the yeah, artwork yeah. or even the theme yeah you can reskin any or, game yeah. if the 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 engine is fun to play with you're fine but yeah. often uh in these, you know these guys they're so enthused in their theme yeah. they're all about that and actually that's not what the publisher mm-hmm. who might invest and might bring your game mm-hmm. on actually wants to know about yeah and so when it comes to the Wyvern's Lair, the, wyvern, so the, the, the den, how many spots do you have? Like, is there still spots available for people to go and do that? How do they apply if you've got something that you want to bring? How does that work? So to delve into the... To, uh, who, want, who want to pitch If you designs. want to pitch, yeah. Yes, because uh, the overall sponsor is Carter Mundy, yeah. who, who is sponsoring that whole track. And uh, But to pitch it, we, we will be having, um, on the 1st of March, um, we'll put live the, the submission process. Gotcha, um, okay. Yeah. And actually Playtest UK, who run the Playtest mm-hmm. Zone, and we'll actually be facilitating and processing those applications mm-hmm. and we'll be um, you know, shortlisting them mm-hmm. down and setting out the invitations. So all of that will go on. So about at, 1st of March, you know, let's oh, look out for March. the newsletter yeah. and, and yeah. announcements via our Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. etc. Yeah. And uh, we'll give you the, well, you know, the final you details know about it, so yes, you can, as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we'll give you a shout out for yeah. it. 
and um, that, that and basically you're going you're to get to apply through that, and we then have a sort of filtering process yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, to make sure you're at the stage mm -hmm. for the particular thing you're going yeah. for. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Wyvern's Lair, you expect it to be quite far on the prototyping because mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to stand up. It's it's more time, smaller number of people. Mm -hmm. Speed dating, mm -hmm. you can be slightly further behind, mm -hmm. etc. But again, you'll get a bunch of advice from mm -hmm. people who know. Who will say to you, "That's not quite in the right place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about doing that?" So again, even the the process of applying is going to give you useful info. Yeah. And if I if I wanted to go in the Wyverns layer, so pick, I'm, I'm going to take a game. How long do I have? How, who, how many people am I standing in front of here? Tell me oh, what. Well, it... Potentially up to three hundred for the audience participation. Yeah. Uh, the uh, you get, I think it's about it's five minutes for the mm -hmm. initial pitch. Okay. Um, and then they 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 think they can call people back for more more questions. But what will happen is is yeah. the 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 dragons or the yeah. wyverns will initially receive your pitches, yeah. all of them, yeah. and go, I'm interested in this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Right. So you've already got at least a couple of them mm -hmm. are interested in your concept. Yeah. Your concept, yeah. yeah. So that's done pre mm -hmm. you coming sure. in. Yeah. Um, so when sure that you're invited in, you can sort of get your five minute, um, and you guys set us up a camera, etc., mm -hmm. so people can see what's yeah, yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, then some questions are asked from the mm -hmm. wyverns, and yeah. they yeah. and they'll, they'll come and do that and and put them under the pressure and see see yeah. you know whether you know what you do. See doing. if any bits fall off. That's right. <laughs> then, then the audience get involved, don't they? Yes. The then then there's a couple of things. The yeah. The wyverns can choose to take that forward. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but because of the different stages, it's not big stacks of money or anything. Yeah. It's a case of we want to continue with that, mm -hmm. and it's you've then made that contact, and that's what we're trying to yeah. get you. Mm -hmm. However, as it's a slight entertainment event as well, mm -hmm. yeah. part of the quid pro quo of us getting you in touch with publishers is now the audience can vote via the app. Yeah and decide whether they think the game should go forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it'll be interesting to know whether after that's happened, whether or not the Wyverns change their, their minds. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have to instantly vote, and it will come up on the screen saying 80% think this is a brilliant idea. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, we may then give the Wyverns another opportunity to change their minds. Oh, wow. But, but that's nice. That, that, that's really, really interesting uh, audience participation. And is that yeah. something, if you want to be a member, can you just turn up or do you have to take it for that? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Just, just, turn just, up? just, again, it's like all our seminar schedule. Yeah. Just, you just turn up for that. First yeah. come, first served. Mm -hmm. um, Download the app first. Yeah, so download the app so that you can, so you can vote. And, and as you come you in, you scan the code. For that vote, yeah. Well, what in order? Yes, in order to use that system, so that we, so that we can identify and you don't get more than one vote per person, yeah. um, you do need to have an Expo account. But again, that's literally email address, your password. Mm -hmm. You'll get a confirmation email. Mm -hmm. Click it to to set your account live. Yeah. Cool. Now you can put that into the app, and of course, then the app will automatically load yeah. in for yeah. you. Fantastic. When you go into Wyvern's Lair, you'll click on the button on the app. Scanning the code mm -hmm. to say you're at the event, so yeah. that only people there can can vote, and then away you'll be like, mm -hmm. it'll be like what's that Tinder thing? Is it where you swipe? <laughs> <right there>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, I'd I'd love that. Not I'd ever use Tinder, board games, obviously. <laughs> Not a man of my caliber. <laughs> And what about what about the speed dealing then? Right, <laughs> Justin, you're having, you're having a, uh, don't, don't, you're having a moment. Right. It's not everyone that can break me on camera, but well done, <laughs> sir. Well done. <laughs> so with the speed dealing, it's a bit more. I don't want to say rough and ready, uh, but a bit. You don't have to be quite as prepared. Well, but that's a private event. So yeah. the, the women's layer is very much in the public eye. Yeah. Uh, with speed dating, it's done in one of the other rooms mm. and invitation only sort of okay, thing. Yeah. So there, the the, the designer have their, their game. Again, you'll still have to apply. You'll still mm -hmm. have to go through this shortlisting process, mm -hmm. which Playtest UK will filter it down. We, we, for every game, generally last year, I think we had 48, 50, 60 applications. Okay. We were only able to get about 12 into, into wow, the process okay. of, because we're actually trying to double the number of, of, of spaces in the speed dating. For this year, year. fantastic. Um, because we actually had quite a few additional publishers who would have been happy to be in on mm -hmm. that. So what you really want is you want, ideally, as many publishers as there are designers. Mm -hmm. So everyone stands yeah. at a the table, they get the five minute pitch, it kind of goes bing bing on the bell, you move on a table. Yeah. And and you just only so your designers can get one mm -hmm. an hour of quick five minute mm -hmm. presentations. And the idea hopefully at the end of that maybe maybe one of the publishers yeah, connections is interested. Made mm -hmm. and, Any anything came uh, out of last year? Anything like that you remember? Yeah, there are certainly a number of the event of the games from uh, either uh, track have gone forward to public wow. publication the most uh, immediate one I can think about is Subterra, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which was a women's own entry, I think, two years ago. Yeah. And obviously, a published event with a successful Fantastic. Kickstarter yeah. campaign recently. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the thing, yeah. what we've learned with these, yeah. isn't it, is that 
the going forward mm -hmm. is, is not normally six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The process starts, mm -hmm. but bringing a, a game from this prototype to full production mm -hmm. takes time. Yeah. And actually, interestingly, even go further back than that, the sort of ancestor of this whole track was something we called the Board Game Redesign Competition that mm -hmm. ran for about three years. So that was something that Pleasure Games actually ran with Surprise Stare and... Um, and the idea of that was they actually got you actually got a bag of bits mm -hmm. and you had to go away and come up with a new game over like, the weekend. Oh, so, yeah. my word. Actually, one of those uh, that was the the last um, finalist of the board game redesign competition a couple of years back uh, came flicky, flicky flicky starships, starships. Uh, is this that was, year no that's where it came at, from at, at, at the expo um, is a new you know new release that's of the expo. fantastic so that's, that's got to cool. the point of being picked up at the mm -hmm. uh, two or three years ago at the expo by. Yeah. A, by a publisher now is being mm -hmm. is being released. So these these processes do lead, I mean, to to publish games mm -hmm. eventually if in some of the cases if there if there's Yeah, I mean yes, I mean I think, you know, there's there's an awful lot of connections that are made and um as I say, it takes time for them to, to come to full production, yeah. as they do for any game. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's understanding the time it takes yeah. for that process mm -hmm. is, is something that they're that especially uh, fledgling designers have to learn yeah. mm -hmm. is that actually it takes a long time to get artwork mm -hmm. sorted to get mm -hmm. design sorted to get production sorted these yeah. are not quick processes yeah. you can do them quick if you want to do them wrong mm -hmm. and you can do them expensive as well <laughs> and wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all doable but in order to make sure that you've got something sustainable that takes time and yeah. and, and, and that's what put it in touch with these mm -hmm. guys so i think you know we're seeing those starting to come through and i think you know, over the next years, we'll mm -hmm. hear more stories. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't hear at all mm. because, they, of course, they go off and do it, mm -hmm. and, you know, and they're busy doing that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we hear suddenly that Flicky Starships is coming yeah. out and that, <laughs> that came from the board game redesign. It's yeah. got to feel good. I, re I, I seriously cannot say enough how happy I am that you guys really do embrace the grassroots side of things and just that this convention is something that's a huge opportunity for anyone who wants to get involved in the industry. It's, it's really nice. And one thing I want to talk about a little bit more then is what you guys also do on the, on the tail end of that. So once you have games that are being sold there, once they're, they're published and they're out in the market, you guys then are taking some extra steps to ensure that the people who leave the event go away and know where their friendly local game store is or where their local publishers may reside. Yes, there's. I mean, for us, we're, we're aware. So there's, there's several things we do. So... This this year we launched, or at the last show, we launched our convention support. Mm -hmm. So we have a warehouse full of kit to run the show yeah. that comes out for three days a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we looked at other conventions, and we and we know that when you're running a convention with 1,000, 1,500 folk, that's a great convention, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's no money in it. Yeah. You know, you're know, you lucky if you don't go broke, mm -hmm. and we know that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, so one of the ways we help is say, well, look, rather than you spend money on this kit, just borrow ours. Yeah. Mm. Wow. No charge. Just borrow that. Really? No charge? No charge. You just borrow it. If you break it, you pay for it. That's fair enough. Because <laughs> we'd, uh, you know, um, but otherwise, you speak to Finney, our warehouse guy. Mm -hmm. You give him a list. Of, we'll tell you what we've got, an inventory of what we've got. Mm -hmm. You can look through it. And that's from printers to computers to boards to three miles of cloth. My goodness. To, um, you know, we don't have tables and chairs because the numbers we need are, are in the thousands. Yeah. So yeah. they're hired in. Um, um, but all sorts of cafe barriers, etc. We also do some large format printing for these conventions mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. put on the cafe barriers, so it's yeah. branded for them. Yeah, yeah. And um, we, of course, and we have thousands of second-hand lanyards mm -hmm. and pockets. Yeah. And those, if you buy them, like they're, they're a pound each. Now we say to me, it does say UK Games Expo on it. Can't do anything about that. But you're more than welcome. Rather than spending five hundred pounds on lanyards, yeah. Yeah. have five hundred of these. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in exchange for that, the only thing that that, that we look for, they say, if, if if you have a partnership thing or a sponsorship thing, can we go on to that as yeah, just yeah. supporting you? Yeah. But, you know, that's it. And if you mm -hmm. don't have anything like that, then fine. You yeah. know, if that's not how your event runs, that's cool in the game. Um, so that was a way of supporting other conventions. Yeah. Then we're looking at things like clubs and shops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things we're looking to do, and we're, we're, we're just working on it now, is... If you came to the expo and bought a ticket and you've got our app, is one of the things when we spoke to retail shops about how can we help, mm -hmm. because I found that my local retail shop had been there six years and I only just found it. Oh, no way. Really? Yeah, because it's six miles away, because yeah. I live in Kidderminster, so there's nothing really local there. But I didn't know it was there. Yeah. Um, you know, Google, you put, you know, so so big now. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I want to support them because that's mm -hmm. my local shop yeah. and they put all sorts of events on mm -hmm. in the evenings and it's great and I want my son to go and yeah. you know because that way he gets out the house and I get a bit of peace and quiet yeah. <laughs> so what what we asked them and they said a discount voucher mm -hmm. So if you've been to the show, the app could show a discount voucher to go into their shop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they tap the phone to say they've had the discount voucher and they get a discount in the shop. Mm -hmm. So you as an expo attendee get a discount at your local shop mm -hmm. cool. and they you, you, that we introduce you to them yeah. if you didn't yeah. know them. And so we're looking to put that into the app this year mm -hmm. and to speak to retailers. Um, We've not got anything for online retailers at the moment. That yeah. would be a bricks and mortar because you've got to physically tap the phone gotcha. mm. in order to, to validate the voucher. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking, we did do at one point a local clubs directory, mm -hmm. uh, but we saw, you sort of announced it, didn't you, without really yes. clearing it with me. Yeah. And suddenly we got thousands of people sending in so and we didn't have the back end to support yeah. it. We're working on that. Yeah. Mm. And we're also working with um, Peter ITB. Di diary as well. Uh, yes, convention diary. Yeah. So hopefully what yeah. we're going to try and do is have a, a range of events to say, enjoyed the expo, great, enjoyed the games. Mm -hmm. How can we support you gaming now during the year? Yeah. Mm. You know, how can we connect you to, to a local club, to your shop? Mm -hmm. um, how can we support other conventions? Mm -hmm. You can go to those great conventions yeah. that, you know, are only just up the road. Yeah. How can we you know basically give back in mm. to to a to to a hobby and for those customers and people who come to us across the board yeah. um I, I literally literally cannot say nice enough things about that it's such a fantastic thing to do it genuinely is and i think it's rare maybe outside in other industries to see one company supporting another in the same area is it working to build the same thing so the fact that you do this for other conventions is just wonderful I really generally I think, think things feed, feed all around the clock, don't they? I mean, it's you, you want people who are playing games and, and, and carrying on doing that, yeah. and the, the, these are the events to, 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 to succeed yeah, but, but, yeah, I mean, uh, if you as well about, for us, if you want to look at it selfishly. But, but it's just, but if you look at Aircon, yeah. Aircon's run yeah. by Mark Cook, who was a volunteer for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, he shamelessly says he nicked a lot of his ideas while working <laughs> in our office, but that's, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? He came and helped us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... We know Mark. He's you know he's a mate. He's a he's a great bloke. He's yeah. very tall. <laughs> <laughs> One of his he's nineteen attributes. feet tall. But you know, and he runs a great convention, and we we we'll be going up to that, yeah. won't we? I mean, because you know, a we can go. Oh yes, because we're supporting it. But actually, we could probably go and play some games. Yeah, you can go and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Aircon, um, Bonescon, we're supporting this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are there are several. You know, we you know we we help. We you know, we've had discussions with Dragon Meat and helping them in mm -hmm. small ways. Uh, they're they're much more organised and mm -hmm. and uh, you know um, Chris from Modifius is very much mm -hmm. on top of that. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's, it's why it's would no why would why wouldn't, you? Yeah. why wouldn't you? These, these that are great the gaming industry. Yeah, but yeah. they're great people, and yeah. you know what? We know how risky it is mm -hmm. running a convention. We yeah. know, and you're like, you know what? I mean, we some of the advice we give. But the other thing we do is we give an advice mm -hmm. thing for if you're thinking yes. of setting up yeah. a convention. So I had one individual come to me and say, I'm running this convention, da da da, and um, as a sole trader. Oh, I said to him, oh, that's nice. I said, you're married? He said, yeah. I said, do you want to stay married? <laughs> <laughs> you need to form a limited company. Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, I've got insurance. I said, yes, but when the insurance doesn't pay out and somebody breaks their leg and you find a small print was wrong and da da da, and now your house is on the line. Mm. So mate, it's not worth it. I love games, but I don't love it that much. Yeah. Mm. So it's a, you know, it's hundred and fifty pound to do this and to, and giving them just that advice because it's just every hole we've fallen down and we've pretty much fallen in them all, haven't oh, we? Yeah, yeah. From forgetting, from not realising we should be VAT registered, so having a VAT register Oof. three months before the show after we've invoiced everyone, <laughs> to getting the power wrong at the NEC where when we moved to the NEC we didn't realise how it worked. So we lost fifteen thousand pounds on power because we put published one price. Yeah. Then when we worked it out, it was wrong. And even going back to the NEC and saying that we stuffed it up, mm. and then giving us half price on power, we still. St but it was our mistake, and so yeah. we very much believe if we make a mistake, we don't punish somebody else yeah. for yeah, it. Absolutely. But we try not to do it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think actually that helps, doesn't it? Because if you've had to pay the price, yeah. yeah, when you've passed it on, you're likely to do it again. Yep. Yeah. You've you learned that lesson. <laughs> you learn that yeah. lesson. <laughs> then we find all new lessons. To start <laughs> but we know how difficult this is. And very often, if you're running a convention, you're stepping into 
negotiations with places. Mm -hmm. I remember one guy came to us, he said, you know, we've run this da da da, and his crew of six, because that's all he had, were going home each night. I said, go back to the hotel and ask them for rooms mm -hmm. for free. Yeah. He said, well, will they give us a room? I said, you're putting 200 folk eating and drinking into their... Mm -hmm. yeah. And he, they didn't even argue with him. They went, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why not ask? They can, because they can always say no. But, but the yeah. thing is, understanding what you're bringing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is taken, it's took us. I mean, you're a GP, I was a vicar. What are we now? Yeah. But over years, you learn what your, your, the value you bring mm -hmm. and what leverage that gives you mm -hmm. and what value you are to the venues yeah, you're at. Exactly. But if you don't know that, then you, you don't know what you can trade. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And so it's just helping people out because we don't want them to lose money mm -hmm. doing something they love. And they're always doing it because, to be honest, none of them are looking to... I've not met one convention runner who's there to make money. Mm. And if they are, they are loony. <laughs> they are proper loony. <laughs> and what, what year are we going into now with UK Games Expo? How, this I mean, is 12th. 12th, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Is it 12th? Yeah, no, it's 11. 7 was the first, wasn't it? Oh, we had a 10th anniversary, but that was always difficult to work out yeah, whether no, it's been no, 10 years. Been Hold on. Well, My daughter was born 16. on the first expo, 18, 12, and, yeah. and she's 11. So right. it's okay. 11 years, 12 expos. Yeah. Got it. Wow. She was yeah. born at the on time? On the Saturday. No Ooh. way. Saturday it was uh, afternoon. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> I was Friday night, because we didn't have a Friday then, I'd done all the ticketing. It was all in packs and boxes, stacked in... Yeah. And my wife said to me, she said, I've gone into labour. So, so we can't do that. Because I've, got to, I've got to take these tickets tomorrow morning to the expo. Oh, and I thought, she was like, I well, thought Warren's kids had bad timing for being born. And she was like, oh, well, she said, well, it doesn't work like that. I said, well, I know, but tickets, got to take them out. <laughs> and so in the end, she, she got up in the morning, it was quite slow, and I, I took the tickets up to the event. And she phoned me and I said, well, how's it going? Are you all right? She said, yes, I'm fine at the moment. Your friend, uh, Our friend Tess had come over. Mm. said, do you want me to come back? No, no, you'll be all right for the minute. And then a little while longer and I got involved in stuff. And yeah. then there was another call and it was her mother saying, I've come now to see Ken. I said, well, is, is he all calling the gang? Are you going to the hospital yet? Do you want me to come back? Well, uh, you know, it's up to you. I said, well, I'll just do a couple of bits more and I'll be, I'll be over as soon as possible. <laughs> and then I got a radio call about an hour and a half later, didn't I? Yes. And there was you and uh, the ven venue manager stood there. And they, yes, I yes. walked up and they took my radio off me. <laughs> and my lanyard and gave me my coat and said, uh, your mother-in-law just rang. <gasps> oh! <laughs> it, it's time to go. Yeah. And I arrived at the hospital Ow. with sort of 40 minutes before Faith was born. And she's poor girl has suffered every year because her birthday always falls on oh. the expo. So normally I bake her a birthday cake because I yeah. bake and decorate her a cake. Oh. Yeah. But this year, it's fun, her birthday falls on the Saturday. And since we, we leave to, to be yeah. on site on the Wednesday, um, we, we can't do that. For the first year, I can't do her a cake. Fuck oh, oh. no. Let's give her the previous weekend. Yeah, it's not the same now. She, she, she's like, you know, she should be on my birthday day. Yeah. <laughs> so I think nice. her, her mother has threatened to make her a cake. Uh, we are trying to negotiate our way out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think anyone around here needs convincing about your guys' dedication. Yeah. Any further to the UK Games Expo and conventions? Like, thank you so much for spending all the time with us in, in the build-up to this. No, it's been great. I can't wait to get it going to to attend it again for another year. Yeah. It's, it's, I think once you start going to these things once, you, you then just keep going, don't you? Yeah. It's like I said. Well, we, it's now a routine. It's now part of our year. Yeah, tradition. tradition. Yeah, it's tradition. That's yes. it. So I'm looking forward to to continue that tradition. Yeah, and well. thanks for inviting us over. And uh, we just want to say. Beast of War Media Partners, you've been fantastic. And, you know, we're really looking forward to this live streaming mm. oh, and to it. everything that you're going to be doing at this yes. year's event. And I think one of, one, one of the no-brainer uh, propositions we were put was <laughs> when did. Warren came to us. Fantastic. And it's been great to work with you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. yeah, well, to you guys at home, if you're sitting on a prototype, if you're sitting on a game, if you just need to strap on a set, this, this yeah, time next over. year, you could be millionaires. Exactly. Get to the Wyverns there. Get to the yeah. speed dating. Go to the prototype area, even for yeah. yourself to get an experience of prototyping or to show off your own thing or go and get a stand. And give or it if you need to get your dad out the garden shed, just grab the crowbar. You know, whatever he's working on, just bring it along. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let us know in the comments below what you think, guys. If you're going, definitely let us know so we can say hi to you there and what you're going to see. Thank you so much to both of you again. And uh, we'll catch you again soon, guys. Thank you. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news 
and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.